Okay. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you all to attend the webinar. So let me introduce myself. Okay. My name is Jeffrey. I'm from Division of Program Promotion, Utah. Okay. So welcome, and we are happy to invite our Utah alumni and bring you a precious sharing by them. So the webinar duration will take approximately one hour. And lastly, we will introduce you our Utah program and contact details of Utah. So now I will pass the floor to our moderator today, Dr. Yu from Utah. Okay, Dr. Yu, thank you. So thanks for joining us today. So I think uh, some of you might be the school uh, secondary school level. Maybe you just uh, finished your, got your SPM result a few weeks ago or SPPM result recently. Yeah, maybe you are still thinking or still uh, trying to look for the right thing to further your study. All right, so uh, maybe some of you are from a uh, current student in Utah, so you, you are interested to know uh, what, what your future work might look like. All right, so today we are really uh, happy and, and, and we, uh, <laughs> we got this, uh, we invited three uh, very, uh, your senior, okay, three speakers uh, who, who, who also graduated from uh, Utah. Uh, uh, in this uh, electronics engineering program. All right, so later we are going to hear from them, okay, some of their sharing, okay, about uh, their jobs and maybe about their study during the Utah time. All right, so without further ado, so let's, uh, let's hear from them. So today we have three special guests, okay, so one, the first is uh, Miss Sim, okay, and welcome Miss Sim, and we have Miss Yuga, okay, welcome Miss Yuga, and finally we have Mr. Harry, all right, so later we, they will introduce themselves, where are they working, all right, so maybe the first question for them, so we would like to hear from you all, so um, uh, when do you graduate from Utah, all right, uh, what is your current job, and do you want to share more about what you are doing in your job now. All right, so maybe we start with Miss Sim. Okay, thanks. Hi, my name is Sim Hian, and you can call me uh, Sky as well. All my friends call me. So I'm, I've studied in Utah since uh, 2008, and then I graduated uh, on year 2013. So I started uh, my Utah journey uh, when I first uh, involved in a foundation in science, and then I start my electronics engineering, and I graduate uh, with a uh, second lower as uh, normal grade in a uh, two thousand and thirteen. So this is my education uh, background. Then I am working as a visions engineer in uh, Penta Master. So I would like to take uh, some this opportunity to share about what is uh, actually my jobs uh, about. Okay, so visions. I am as a vision engineer. So right now I want to talk about some my job scope and then let uh, many of you guys to understand what what is a vision engineer and what is a career that electronics uh, can get. So. So we all know about uh, visions. Visions are related to eyes, right? So visions in this world is about uh, uh, see and then think and then do. It's like we capture the image and then we do some image processing and then we let the robots know what to do on the last step. Okay, so I provide some samples so here are some two units. So the left one is the good part and then the right one is the good part. So maybe you guys can look about and tell me what is the difference. So with our human eyes, we are actually can difference within two seconds. But with the uh, implements of the vision system, we are actually can differentiate between 100 milliseconds. This is about vision engineers and this relates to the technologies that involve in vision systems. So uh, the importance of the vision system is that um, now, nowadays uh, our, when we work long hours, 
So our eyes will be like very tired and then we'll make some uh, human's error. So with the implementations of the vision system, we actually can reduce some human's eye error. And then this will help in the technologies nowadays. So this is about my job scope, my job. So I can pass back to Jeffrey and then let's hear about the others. Okay, thanks, Miss Sims. All right, so I see. So this is what you do in your work. All right, so let's uh, hear from Miss Yuga. Yeah, uh, you need to unshare your screen, Miss Sim. Uh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> let me, let me, let me. Sorry, this is my first sharing and then... <laughs> it's all right, but, but it's good, it's good. All right. <laughs> well, everybody... Okay, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hi right, everyone. So, hi, Miss Yuga. Okay, okay can I share my slide you. now? Yes, yes. Okay. So, hi everyone. My name is Yuga Rani. I'm 28 hi. years old. And uh, once I finish my SPM, I continue A level in this third. So, once I graduate from this third, I joined uh, Utah in 2013, May batch. Then I completed studies in 2017. And upon I graduated from Utah, I got a job in Mini Circuit. Actually, uh, I did internship in Mini Circuit earlier for three months. Then I continue uh, work, working, I'm still working in, uh, in Mini Circuit for four years. So my job scope and what are, what are my job over there is uh, working as a FA engineer, which means failure analysis engineer. And so what is the job scope over there? For example, if there is a Basically, Minisaki is a manufacturing company and we uh, come up with our own product. And uh, so my job scope in Minisaki is, for example, if you have any failure in uh, units, I mean, for like uh, in the devices, they will send to us. So to do inspections on the units. So we will perform uh, external package inspections, internal package inspections to study the defect not only to find out the defect, we also do the reversing engineering. For example, if there is a product, finishing product, so they will send us to, to study to see whether got any, like for example, uh, all the requirements is meet the spec, uh, the spec or not. So at the beginning, we will do external in inspection. So where we will inspect on the package. So the package, I mean, it could be the devices. The devices could be the amplifiers, uh, trans transformers, uh, filters. So there's a lot of kind of devices that we are building in uh, built in mini circuit. So we will perform internal package inspection, uh, sorry, external package inspection, first of all. So usually we will use some of the equipments over here. So this is the basic equipments, uh, low power optical microscope, high power optical microscope, and also x-rays. So once we finish our external package inspections, and we'll proceed for internal package inspections where we will decap the unit. So in our term, we call it destructive analysis and non-destructive analysis, which means once we get the package, we will perform non-destructive analysis without destroying the unit. We will perform the inspection. So once we've done non-destructive analysis, we will continue with destructive analysis. So here we will proceed with uh, decapsulations, which means we will open the package to see the dye inside of the package. So from here, we will use a lot of equipments to study the dye. Okay, there is a different type of uh, equipments like uh, advanced technology, I mean, advanced uh, equipments, for example, SEM, EDX systems, uh, RIE. So uh, for example, what else? Uh, SAM, you scan the units. So a lot, lot of equipments in our lab. So once we perform external, once we perform internal package inspections, once we found the defect on the unit, if there is any defect, so we will capture using SCM and we will compile the report and we will share to the requester. So usually we will do products uh, upon request by customer return or also in-house engineering. So that's how my uh, job scope in Mini Circuit. Thank you. All right, thanks Miss Yuga. Wow, that sounds uh, is a very complex 
job, all right? So maybe uh, many of our audience might might not, uh, it's, it's hard for them to imagine, So, but this is engineer, right? So you need a yeah, complex right. knowledge to perform your jobs, all right? So that's why mm -hmm. you need to go through this uh, university training so that in order to prepare you for this, this kind of complex job. Okay, so let's hear from Mr. Harry, okay? Sure, Dr. Yu. First of all, thank Hi. you for inviting me here. Okay, uh, let me introduce myself. I'm Hari Chans. Uh, if you wanted to know where I'm from, I'm local Penang, I'm Penang Bronze. And I'm working in Penang as well. So you might be wondering that whether I'm like hardcore Penang lungs or not. Yeah, <laughs> I'm kind of hardcore. Of course, Chakwiti is the best, I would say. Well, my education background, I'm studying um, electronic engineering in Utah Kampa, and then I graduated in the years of 2013, same years as uh, Sky. And I know that it's quite some time ago. Okay. So uh, as what uh, my job right now, I'm working in the Intel, um, Intel Malaysia. Uh, it's actually Intel Malaysia, you know that you have in Kulims and also in the Penang. So I'm actually based in Penang Islands because it's, as, as what I'm mentioning, Penang Lang. <laughs> okay. So uh, I started my journey in Intel since I was an internship. That means uh, before I graduate, I already started my internship in the youth, uh, in Intel. So that time I'm just a normal uh, validation engineer. That means to, to test the microprocessor. But by the way, you guys know the Intel or not? I believe that all oh, you know what's Intel, right? It's, uh, it's a microprocessors and microcontrollers uh, industries, which is a, like a very giant company for microprocessor. So those are using those laptop. Mostly you can see that there's an Intel logo there. Okay, I'm, yeah, I'm starting my internship there and as a relation engineer where I start to explore with myself in the microprocessor, how the microprocessor works and how you can program it and run the tests on it. So that actually made me very interesting to actually explore more. So when I graduate in the year 2013, I joined back Intel, but different department because you know that Intel is very big and there's a lot of departments doing a different different thing like failure analysis, all those things. But I'm joining in uh, as a as a embedded engineer because I know that what I'm likely to do, I wanted to program a uh, hardware. I wanted to program uh, hardware that can actually operate what we want. So that's what we call embedded engineers. So that's why I actually joined as embedded engineers and trying to do all these uh, development jobs like programming, how to create a graphic driver, video driver, and all those things. And now I'm actually trying to switch from embedded engineer to the AI support engineers. AI is like artificial intelligence. So it's a new trend for the electronics engineering. If you to know that it's a new technology that people are like hooahing all around the world, especially during the pandemics, AI has become like the very important things. So I'm joining that team and trying to um, improve myself and trying to learn how AI can motivate, uh, how to improve our daily life and to make our life much better with the AI. Yep. So this is basically okay. what I would like to share on my work experience. Back to you, Ms. Dr. Yu. Okay, right. Thanks, uh, Mr. Hari. Okay, so now we know we know some background of our speaker already, and they also share some of their job and what 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 is their job looks like. Okay, so this is what my uh, you all might ex experience, but this is a, a very small part of EE industry. There there will be much so much more about EE industry, right? Okay. So next, uh, let's hear from our speakers today. So why, why do you choose electronics engineer? So maybe many of the secondary school leavers, they are still uh, thinking, hesitating. What, what is the thing that is suitable for them? So maybe from your sharing, from your experience, maybe this can help them to uh, make their decisions. Okay, right. So why do you choose uh, this electronics engineering and and why Utah? Okay, why not other university? And why you want to come to Utah? All right. So maybe let's hear from you. All right. Uh, maybe we start with Miss Sim again. <laughs> Thanks. Oh, okay. Hi. Uh, so why I choose Utah? Because since uh, I was in uh, high school, I heard about uh, Utah. Or oh, everyone talking about, oh, Utah is a good university. 
also and I think this is this is the choice. Uh. So I choose Buddha. And then this is the the only use, the university I go apply. So and then I get it in a, so I know where I want to go. So why EE? -E? <laughs> they are they are uh, a bit influenced by my by my family and my father. My father is a wire man. So uh, uh, during my young age, he, he got mentioned about all oh, the technology, the many uh, electrical parts. So I think I want to explore it. So I choose electronics uh, engineering. Yeah. And then not, not only me, my sister, my brothers, and then also my cousin also uh, choose electronics. I think lecturers uh, should know, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, this is what I know. Yeah, this is I know your yeah. sister. Yeah, so uh, yeah, uh, so that's we are very curious. Hey, why all your families, your siblings, all your siblings, and even your cousin are choosing electronics engineering? I see. So that is under the influence of your father. I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That that's great. A, a role model. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, it's a, a role model. Uh, actually, also, uh, there is a a, a little point. Uh, it's like. Um, my, to be honest, uh, my results uh, from SPM is not very, very, it's not very good. It, I just uh, score two A's. So two A's uh, nowadays is like, ah, I'm so little. But then uh, I think I can accept this challenge. And then in the end, I successfully graduated from this EE course. And then uh, this makes me so proud of uh, myself also uh, because I didn't give up. Even though it's a very, very hard subject, I, so it's a role model. And then um, I encourage my sisters and uh, brothers also can take this kind of challenges. Wow, okay, this is very inspiring. I think this is yeah. very inspiring because maybe some school even might think, hey, I didn't I'm get a going. very good result. Yeah. Can I be an engineer? Yeah, but of course, yeah, yes. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, from experience, I think this is a very good encouragement for them, even yeah. your junior who is studying now. So maybe they are afraid they are feel like they are not good. Actually, as long as you try it, you challenge it, I think you can become very good. Yes. Uh, so we look at missing you're already working for in the industry for so many years already seven mm, yeah. eight years seven. yeah that's 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 a great story okay yeah. thanks thanks miss sims so let's yeah, hear thanks. from miss yuga thanks All right. okay so why i choose ee actually i didn't choose ee at the first i completed my a level in uh, science stream as well and i thought i want to continue in pharmacy but during that time they said like you know uh, it's very hard to get a job in pharmacy field, doctor field, you know, there's a plenty of doctors, you know, it's very hard to get, you know, uh, a job once you've graduated. Then I decided then what, what choose, what course to, to, uh, to, to, uh, to choose? And then I just think, okay, why not try engineering? When I talk to my family, then my family said, uh, you're a woman, why you want to choose engineering? Why not you choose, you know, you can go for a lecturer, teachers, all like this. So I feel like, okay, why not give a try? Because many women are working in the industry field right now. You know, compared to guys, you know, in my in my department, we have two uh, ladies and one uh, is my manager. So a lot of women are working now. So why not just give a try? So actually, my uncle, as I, I follow um, uh, Miss Kai, she said uh, her role model is uh, her father. My role model is my uncle, but he's no more now. He already passed away. When I complete my uh, PMR, he already passed away. So I feel like, you know, he's my role model. When I saw him every time, he's like the way he walk, you know, when he passed away, he was in a manager post and he did in electric, electrical engineering. So I just choose, why not I go for electronic engineering and I want to, you know, I want to achieve something. Then only I choose electrical engineering. Actually, first of all, I choose electric, electrical electronic engineering in Sungai Long, is it? I'm not sure Sungai Long is a tapa. And my parents not allowed me to go to KL. True, because yeah. Because it's woman, right? So you cannot go there. You know, you have to. How are you going to stay alone there? So and then I changed course to electrical electronic engineering. And in Kampar, my uncle staying there. So he said, Utah is very nice environment. You should come and study here. And actually, it's a reasonable price also. If you compare to other uni, the price is very reasonable. And and then I just give up. I I just uh, go for it. So that's how I I choose EE. And I just love Utah. But at the beginning, I feel a bit like, you know, struggle because you don't have any 
uh, friends, of, I mean, I'm alone there for my uh, A-level. I went there alone. I have no any friends. None of them I know, know each other. So once I go there, I a bit struggle. And I was Indian in my course. And lot, everyone is Chinese. And I don't know how to speak Mandarin. But thank God, all my Chinese friends is very close with me because I'm the only Indian. So wherever they go, they will bring me and go. So I really enjoy studying in Utah. So yeah. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Uh, thanks, Miss Yoga. <laughs> okay, a very interesting start story again. So you raised one good point. Actually, if you look at our today's lineup in our speakers, we have three and two of you are actually ladies. <laughs> okay, so maybe some might think, hey, I'm a lady. Am, am I suitable for this job, this kind of job also? I, I think uh, you also share some very interesting point. All right, so even your manager are is a lady yeah see actually even women can really do well in this this industry that that is that's a good sharing also all right so thanks uh, for sharing that uh, your life in you uh, Kampa also actually my experience also i can see here uh, maybe in my first day first day of the semester so maybe some of the students sitting alone so they don't have friends but in the end of the semester, I can see there's a very big, big difference. They start to sit in groups. They have their own gang. They hang out together. They go out for lunch together. So even like you, maybe they are from different ethnicity, but in the end, actually, they, they become a gang. I think this, this is something good, all right? So I think they are, they are very friendly to each other, our students, all right? So let's, let's hear from Mr. Hari, all right? Thanks. <laughs> Hey, if you ask me why am I choosing uh, electronics engineering, uh, okay, go back to my school time. In fact, the words engineering not even exist in my dictionary. So I do not know what's mean engineering at times until I actually like continue my form four, form five, all those things. So, but what actually interesting me is that when I'm school time, I like to come up with all these crazy ideas like um, how to create something out of it, how to solve the problems, how to actually like, I want to hide something. So I actually think out some things like uh, crazy idea using the nut school and then uh, to do here and do there. And I like to come up with all those things. So that time I was thinking that, hey, maybe I wanted to take out uh, as a scientist because that time scientists are everywhere because we, when we watch cartoons and we watch all those anime, you can see the word scientist, scientist, but there's no such thing engineers. Yeah, so I thought that, hey, maybe I wanted to be a scientist. I can be a scientist and I can do all these things. So when I actually reached form four, form five, and I tr tried to explore much further, then only I realized there is the engineering and I try to deep understanding what engineering do and how they can benefit the society. Then only I realized that, hey, this is what I'm wanted to do. This is what I'm actually looking for. Yeah, and why electronics? Of course, because I like to play with uh, gadgets, all those things like uh, phones, like, uh, uh, like uh, iPad, uh, iPods, those like listen to the music and all those things because I like to play with all those things and I like to understand how the things work. So that's why I actually choose electronics in the first place. Okay, um, why Utah? Okay, uh, basically, I'm also the kind of like kiasu. That means I'm I not wanted to lose to anybody. So I did a lot of research during uh, after my form five. I did a lot of research and what is the best university, what is the best path that I can actually go because I wanted to make myself better. So I do a lot of research, do a lot of study and end up I'm actually here, Utah, because um, it's not because... One thing is actually like, yes, the cost effectiveness and then the, the education system is quite good and then it's recognized by the internationals, all those things. And also, I like the environment. So this is what attracting me in the first place. The environments and I, I, I like, okay, I'm tired with all this um, city thinking and I wanted to have a very like university lifestyle places. This is what I actually want. So that's why I'm actually choose Utah and just apply for PTPT ends. And the, even the cost living is also like, I feel that it's not really that expensive and I can cover everything with the PTPT end myself. So yeah, so that's my story on all this. Yeah, okay, thanks, Mr. Hari. Actually, you share one very good thing is uh, the, the attribute of this engineer is to, to, to have this problem-solving mindset. Uh, the, the, the ability of problem solving, I think that's something maybe your junior should take notes of. Yeah? 
and and also you mentioned about Kampa campus. Yeah, Kampa campus is I think is this it the is the place where you can have really a real campus life, a university student with campus life. Yeah, I think that's uh, some special things about uh, Kampa campus. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks, Mr. Harry. So uh, let's hear more from them. So let's move on to the next thing. Uh, uh, what do you think about this EE industry? Just now, maybe Miss Yuga already mentioned that uh, uh, the job opportunity. Is there any job opportunity when you graduate? So is there, is there too much graduate from electronics engineering and so on? Yeah, maybe you would like to share about the what you what you what you know about EE industry from from what uh, from your experience from your knowledge. Okay, and maybe you can tell about your your company also. Are they uh, they need a lot of uh, new engineer and so on, right? And maybe Miss, Mr. Harry can uh, discuss a bit on this emerging technology since you're working in this AI department. Or maybe uh, this is a good sharing for us to know uh, what is the future might looks like. Okay, thanks. Uh, maybe we start with Miss Sim again. <laughs> yeah, maybe we go the same way. All right, thanks. And you forget to unmute your mic, Miss Sim. Yeah, I, are you speaking, Miss Sim? Yes. Uh, okay, yeah, we can hear you. Thanks. I think you mute again, Miss Sim. So for me, I think that uh, choosing the EE is the first. It's the first step and also the first door to unlock the technologies. So you might think, how can electronics and engineering help in the technologies, right? But then I can tell you that uh, technologies are everywhere. So especially uh, in technologies are uh, involved in many machines, uh, robots, and also many equipment equipments. So which which you can actually uh, consider about. So for example, I can I can give a simple sample example is that the mobile phone we are using. So how can electronics engineering help? So a simple mobile phone, it consists of many IC integrated circuits. So with the simple in IC, you actually have to combine it and then you can actually learn this uh, uh, how to draw a schematic diagrams during e electronic classes. So this the first point that we can benefit in the future. So the second, besides of the hardware things, we also can choose about the software. Like there are many apps uh, like WhatsApp, Instagram. Uh, those you actually can learn about the basic language, the basic programming language during the studies. So which so with the hardware and software combinations, I think that is a strong reason you can choose about the electronics and this will help in the future. So like Miss Yuga talked about, there are many careers from electronics engineering, right? So you actually be can become a process engineer, IC design engineer, uh, the uh, radio frequency test engineers, product engineers, and also software engineers like I am now. So I am as a vision engineer, we also consider as like a, uh, it's kept as a software engineer. I think, I think this all you can choose after you graduate from electronic classes. There are a lot of, there are a lot of careers. So the, the things you learn in during the electronic class, you don't worry, you can apply in any career you choose uh, re which related to uh, technologies, especially uh, automation. Automation, so we talk about automation, we can uh, imagine that uh, the robot's movement, the, pro the uh, machine is working. So all this programming language, PLC knowledge, you all can learn from electronic classes. So you can consider and I think this helps uh, in, in the career nowadays. Okay. 
All right, thanks for uh, the sharing from me, Steve. So thanks for even preparing a slide to show hey, actually what kind of uh, field that we can work in as an EE engineer. All right, so actually there are so many branches that you can choose from, all right? So there's a lot yes, of opportunity yes. out there. Yeah, all right, thanks. All right, so let's hear from Miss Yuga. What do you think about, about the EE industry? Okay, actually, um, I did internship in Mini Circuit as I, I explained to you earlier. Then I, I did in the same department, failure analysis department. So once I graduated, then when I find job in a job street, then I found there is a job in failure, I mean, in a mini circuit, same, uh, I mean, same uh, job, uh, failure analysis engineering. So I just applied, then I called for interview. And then uh, since I already did internship over there in the same course, I mean, same uh, field. So they, they, uh, they hired me. And at the beginning, I feel that um, maybe it's not related. Okay, what I, whatever I study, maybe it's not related. But somehow when it is like, you know, when it's go, going on and you have to, you have, you got an opportunity to study about the devices. Okay, in the package, you know, I told you earlier, there's uh, amplifiers, you know, filters, all these things. So whatever we study in our EE, okay, you can apply still, we can apply in our job also, okay, to study the design of the package, you know, uh, how's, the, how's the transistor, how's the resistor looks like in the design, everything we can study from what we study in EE, we can, we can imagine how it looks like. Actually, if you study in a EE, it's like the resistor means it's different, but if the design is different. So you have to, anyhow, you have to, how, how to say, you have to absorb it, how the design looks like. So that's why I say, uh, as, as, as I, what, what uh, Ms. Uh, Sim said, um, Anyhow, it is related in our, in our, your, in your studies, um, in, in your working uh, lifestyle. Whatever you study, and it's, it's like a small portion, a small portion in your engineering field will be uh, involved with, okay? Like, until now, I'm still studying, okay? If there is uh, any open circuit, short circuit, so you have to study what is, why, why it happened open circuit, why it happened a short circuit. So you will study the design. Is it the input uh, failure or output failure or the capacitor, capacitor burn or the metallization got melted or you know, uh, open. So all these things is based on our basic EE. So that's how I, I'm still learning now. So yeah, that's my sharing. And the second one is, uh, what's the second question is about the, what is the new skills demanded by the emerging technology? Okay, if you see in our, uh, let me share something. Okay. Okay, so here's the thing. So if you see here, okay, so you have a lot of advanced technology and advanced machines in our, uh, in our, I mean, in our companies. So without any advanced technology, we cannot proceed, we cannot enhance our work. For example, if don't, we don't have any advanced machines, the work for, for example, you know, we finish in within two days, it will take five days without the advanced machines. So one of the machines we have in, uh, in our lab is the ATM. So this machine is actually uh, used for, uh, sorry. Oops. Okay, how's it? Okay, so this one is actually, we will use it in, uh, once I, I, as I told you, once we open the package, so you cannot use low optical and high optical to inspect the unit because as I told you, the die is very, very small, very tiny. High optical and low optical can go up to magnification of 1,500. So if you have an advanced technology, for example, SEM, it can go up to 100K or 200K magnifications to inspect the, uh, the die. So from here, we can see the defect very clearly compared to low optical and high optical. Other than that, we also have EDX. For example, we have contaminations on the die. So we can use this EDX system to analyze what are the elements uh, that have been contaminated, I mean, from, uh, from the contaminations. So from here, we can study what, where, the, the, where the contaminations came from and everything. So that's why advanced machines is very important in our companies, which we can enhance our work. We can finish the work within, I know, one day. Even my projects, without these things, I cannot finish it. I cannot finish it within uh, one day. With having this, uh, this one, we recently we bought it. Okay, before this, we have another machines, but we don't have like quite, you know, high power. So this one is quite in a, in a current advance. So from here, we can do our, our project within one or two days, 
maximum two days we take it. If it is customer return means, then we have to finish it within two days. If it's in-house means, then we can break it up to four days or so. So I think I think that's that's it. Yeah, thanks, Miss Yuga. Okay. Yeah, um, maybe when Miss Yuga explain about uh, his uh, her, the the thing related to her job, so it sounds it sounds like so complicated, complex, uh, very advanced technology uh, machines and so on. So maybe some of us might think might might be afraid that. Um, Wow, maybe EE is very tough to study because wow, you, you see you need to operate all these very complex uh, machines. But actually, when, actually you when, see, when, when you when we I'm sorry to interrupt you. When I study in no EE, problem. right? Okay, they will explain how the transistor looks like, how the resistor looks like. But in transistor, for example, it's a FPT transistor, you have a, a drain, source, and gate. From here, we, we just see from that how the gate, gate looks like. But using SEM machines, we can actually can measure what is the length of the gate, what is the length of the drain. We can see exactly how the design looks like. So that's very interesting using SEM machines. You can't see all these things using low optical or high optical. So that's why we need a very advanced technology. Thank you. Mm, yeah, yeah, correct, true. Yeah, so that's the thing. So it means that um, when you are able to uh, able to uh, obtain this very complex knowledge, actually you makes yourself become valuable. It means that if you if you doing the job that everyone can do, it's easy to do, easy to get obtain the knowledge, easy to learn. It means that so uh, I can get anyone to do this with a very low cost, right? But when when you are uh, engineers, so you you need to learn this very advanced knowledge, uh, complex knowledge. So this, I think, this is a thing that makes you very valuable. It means uh, uh, the, the company needs you, so you you become uh, very valuable for this. All right. So uh, thanks, uh, Miss Yuga. Let's hear from Mr. Hari again. All right. Uh Hey, um, emerging technology, if you're asking me what's emerging technology is, in fact, it's based on the situations and also the environments that our current, just take example, in this current environment, you know that pandemics hits and everybody says like, ah, everything's changed very fast. So some they cannot adapt, some they can adapt. So this is where the technology come in. And if you think of it, during this pandemics, is it, is it like only the one that is learning the medical field will actually rush there and help to solve the problem or help to maintain this? In fact, the one that playing behind is uh, technologies. So we are using a lot, a lot, a lot of technologies to use to control these pandemic situations and to help those um, make the situations uh, clear. So technologies actually play a lot of important role in this pandemic as well, if you realize that. So, um, talking about how Intel can help in this, uh, how Intel emerge actually starting from a very simple microprocessors and then start become a, a supercomputer that means they also developing the server system and then slowly they evolve. So when I'm actually joining um, Intel at times, I know one thing, something's actually uh, very emerging, which is we call it IoT. So uh, before IoT, actually we call it a smart devices or smart system. How to make a system much more smarter, like your smartphones, right? It's how to make these things smarter and all those things. Then from the smart, how to make a device become smarter, smarter system, we go to the IoT, Internet of Things. Then we start to like how to make a thing connected to each other. So you can see that this is another level up means from the smart making the device become smart we're going to make the device connected to each other for example like um how to make your devices connect to the um maybe your work environments and then you can control from there or you can actually uh, connect to the certain faces and control from there so during this pandemic we realized that how important this iot so from iot is actually a much another level ai Okay, everybody know about AI, how the artificial intelligence works. So, but how this thing evolve? Because it's a demand. We want to make the thing much better, much um, easy to use. And also we wanted to make the things um, like can able to help resolve the problem. Like for example, after we have all those 
everything connected to each other already. The next thing what we want to do to make it smart, we wanted to make it like, okay, I can I when the thing detected your face, I wanted to know that this is you, this is Hari, this is Yoga, this is Doctor You, and not anybody else. So that's what we actually need to apply uh, artificial intelligence into the system to make it much more smarter. Okay, so what is the uh, new skill that you require all these things? Basically, if you if you're asking me, how am I supposed to catch up all this technology? Well, it's all come from the basics. If you're able to understand the basics, like for example, programming skill, basic electronic skill, how the system works is actually more than enough for you to uh, grab all those different emerging technology, even though the tomorrow, if this new technology came in, who knows, I, I'm not sure. If tomorrow there's new technology, I think I myself can able to get, capture it because I have the basics, I have the programming skill, I have the basic electronic skill. So all these skills help me to uh, catch up with the technologies, catch up with all these uh, different kind of uh, environments. But of course, the thing that you need for yourself is, are you willing to learn or not? So this is the main thing that you should ask yourself. If you're willing to learn, you're willing to catch up, nothing was stopping you. Yep. So like, for example, in this, uh, as in this, during this uh, pandemic, so Intel starting from like chip processor, they know that um, before the pandemic hits, they already come up with all these IoT things, is come up with all this uh, platform that can actually perform the AI, can perform all these things. So when the pandemic hits, haha, <laughs> we can actually just like, okay, just use it, whatever we have right now. And then you can see that even the markets in this uh, technologies right now, during this pandemic, is very important and you can see all those electronics company like um like uh Akisai and all those things they are actually doing very well in terms of business and economics because they are the one that actually help the society helping the societies governments to tackle all those uh, situations yep back to you dr yu Okay, thanks, Mr. Hari. Yeah, so from your, your sharing, actually, uh, we know what's the situation with the EE industry currently, right? Seems like uh, looks bright and looks good. Hopefully, it will continue. Okay, so um, maybe that's uh, almost the end of the, our sh uh, sharing session today. So maybe I would like to ask you about these questions. Um, do you have any advice uh, for your junior, maybe who is a current student and maybe is a who is going to uh, maybe interested to study in EE? Do you have any advice? Uh, uh, what is uh, what what they should appreciate during their university time? Yeah, make use of it. Yeah, thanks. Maybe uh, miss him again. Oh, uh, take the chance. I think about. Studying, I think, can spend more time looking at the programming because I believe, like just like Mr. Harry said, the basic is very important. So during my time, uh, if if I can go back to my university time, I definitely will spend more time on studying my fundamental, my basic electronic knowledge and also the programming knowledge. I think I suggest to my junior is that you study more. <laughs> and then uh, when, <laughs> and when lecturers uh, ask about, uh, uh, and also participate in more assignments, it's like maybe assignments that share together, maybe you can volunteer. Yeah, I want to do it individually. <laughs> yeah. Of course, uh, this uh, can help in uh, fundamentals and then it, it also helps you to how to, to build up your logical thinking to produce uh, something uh, of the outputs that uh, the assignment wanted. Yeah. So I would suggest uh, to spend more time on the basic things, uh, basic fundamentals, uh, programming, the electronics knowledge, uh, how to troubleshooting maybe. Because during like a, a assignment time, then you can learn up the uh, troubleshooting skills also. Yeah. I'll, I'll that. yeah, all right, all right. Thanks, Miss Sim. I think yeah, very sincere and genuine advice from Miss Sim. So so maybe you you everyone should really take take the advice. Yeah. 
And if you have anything to share uh, about your university time, maybe you can share also. Yeah, if you, if you got prepared anything, if not, uh, maybe I will just, uh, we will continue with the next speaker. Uh, during my in university time, I think uh, some uh, the like attitude uh, attitude which should be good uh, even though for me I think my result is not good but then this will not uh, uh, affect anything on my personal attitude yeah then because uh, sometimes Go high and then get some good companies, but score bad also not equal to you get a bad company. Maybe you get the chances, the opportunity that uh, uh, your uh, someone give you. So this bring me back to my so uh, my my internship. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> uh because uh, last time I was intern in uh, Agilent, and then that time. As, as I mentioned, my result is not that good. But then I have given the chances, the opportunity to join uh, Agilent. So during my intern time, uh, I work well and then follow the, uh, the task that uh, my managers assigns to me. And then, and then I also got the chances that uh, because of my manager trust on me, then that feel that I'm okay. I mean, I communication parts and then my learning uh, okay then I give it a chance to become a trainer for the for the uh, technical and then the fresh uh, engineers in engineering so so this is my I think it's good to share sometimes bad result doesn't mean that uh, oh you get a bad company and then oh this company is not good so when an uh, opportunity is given, grab it. So you might change the your future. And then because of the chances that uh, Agilent gave me, then and it quite quite good comments on me. Then I also give a chance to participate the ex exchange exchange program that EE provided. So so. It's quite a good experience during my study time. Yeah. Then, well, All right, thanks. Uh, thanks for your sharing, Miss Sim. Thanks. All right, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, so let's hear from Miss Yuga again. Yeah, so what, do you, what, what advice do you have? Okay, actually, I really agree with Miss Sim. For me, for me, I really frankly say I'm not really good in software. I'm good in hardware. So whenever it comes to group, Okay, uh, one of my students, uh, I mean, one of my classmates will take soft, uh, soft part and then we will take hard part. So I'm very good. I'm not saying I'm not, not very good, but I'm good in hardware system. Like, you know, how to fix the things and everything. But when it comes to programming, oh my God, you know, I, as I told you, I did A-level. So A-level, we don't have any uh, C++ language. Okay, when I come to, uh, when I come to EE, okay, the first semester is a C++ language. I don't know what language is that. Oh my God, we don't understand. I was like, you know, every day I will cry in my room. Okay, you, you have to trust me. Every day I'll call my grandma, I will call my uh, mother. I, I don't know, I don't know. I feel like very, I know at the, at the beginning, I really regret why I take EE because it's really hard. And then it's like, you know, it makes me like, why not you give a try? Why not you challenge yourself that you can get a good grade in uh, programming? You can, you can do it in programming. So I really put a lot of effort. Okay, I really, you know, if I want to go to Utah back, I really want to, you know, skill, I mean, master skill on the programming part. Since my hard, hardware is really good, so I really want to, you know, take a, you know, it's like spend some time to study on programming, only in programming. Because now everything is, everything is based on programming. So, you know, you know, you have to spend some time on programming. So, that's why once you go to EE, okay, once you start your EE, programming is very, very important, okay? And then next is don't ever skip lecture class, tutorial class. It's very, very important. I know most of the students like to skip tutorial class. Tutorial class is very, very important, which can, you know, it really helps you in your final. And next is try to take part in, uh, you know, like uh, other activities like the events. Okay, don't always start to, you know, 
uh, you know, you will like tenggelam is it tenggelam in your studies. You have to take part in your, uh, you know, activities like co-curriculums because once you graduated, you have to communicate with a lot of customers, with your colleagues and everything. So you need to have a very, you know, wide uh, mind. You know, uh, whether your communication skill is good or not, whether you are, how to say, you already um, uh, involved, your involvement is very good. Your uh, involvement is very important. So that's why when you want, this is, this is the only opportunity, uh, this is the only phase that you can explore. Okay, once you study finish from Utah, there's no any place you want to go and explore in the co-curriculums and activities. So Utah, I mean, your uni level is one of the good base okay to take part in all the events activities and everything so always stay active and you know at the same time have a study smart okay and and you have to spend some time to attend all these uh, activities and basically i didn't attend any activities to be frank because i always you know study 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 so once i graduated from utah i feel like i'm so wasted why i didn't get involved in a lot of events because when you come with a lot of like students from government university they will say, I take part in a lot of activities, a lot, lot of curriculums, but myself, I didn't frankly say. So I really regret why I didn't take part in all these events and activities. So I think that's all my sharing. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Miss Yuga. Yeah, yeah, from your own story. How about let's hear from Mr. Hari again. <clears throat> okay, so for me, um, because in your entire life, Uni life is, is very short. It's just like four to five years, but it's very precious. For me, it's very precious. So use this precious moment because the, the time is so short. So use this precious moment to explore more things that you like to explore. Joining different, different things, like joining the different clubs, joining the competitions, different kind of activities. So this one is actually to shape yourself because when you can... Uh, like joining competitions, you can explore yourself with different, different kind of technology, different kind of environments, different kind of business people. So who knows, one day you might become an uh, entrepreneur, right? So or maybe after you finish, you're already graduated, you already start up your new company and become an entrepreneur. So use this moment, use this moment that you actually inside your new, in your, when you are university time to shape all those things that you wanted to, to shape. Okay, creating a new idea, be innovate, and then um, try to like joining, get connected with different people like the business, uh, business faculties to get to know all those things. Okay, but uh, let me share some things that I like to share. So during my time, so I'm actually involving a lot of, uh, as you can see that a lot of activities like participate here and there. I'm also actively in, um, in competition so i actually trying to join these competitions and trying to like make myself much more active yeah this is the right word make myself active and busy because it's so precious so i'm not going to want to waste any time so like trying to do some project that i feel that interesting trying to come out a project or you can even cooperate with your lecturer to come out a new ideas patterns and submit a paper why not right so you can actually take this opportunity to um, do all these things. So please participate in a lot of competition workshops. If there's any opportunity, participate in that and then try to attend all those talks that uh, people can uh, give you motivation because that is the one that can make you mature a lot. For example, uh, competitions that will actually make your make you mature, make you a better decision maker person and also improve your communication skill, leadership skill and all those skills that actually you need as an entrepreneur as a normal salary man like me and a lot of things so i don't stop here in fact you can see that i'm actually keep on doing the same things in the uni time but when i'm actually start my career it, when i start my career i don't stop there i keep on innovate i keep on joining the competitions with uh, different companies like okay this company wants to uh, like uh, Penang having a science fair i'm actually participate come up with my own idea and then showcase my own idea even though it sounds really silly, but I'm still trying my best like, to come out things that can present to people. Okay, like for example, you can see the traffic light. I'm actually trying to present how to make the traffic much more intelligent, much more smarter, that we do not keep on waiting for the red light to be stopped. So I'm trying to come up with uh, innovations. And, and after that, I also have an opportunity to give a workshop to the people around me 
Okay, on the left hand side, you can see that there's a project we call Smart Agriculture, how to actually come up with a smart agriculture that can automatically watering, planting the things. So all these things, I don't stop, even though I already passed my uni side, but I keep on continues. But I can say that uni is the best time to do all these things. Yep. So uh, that's it for my right, Thanks, uh, Mr. Hari. Okay. <laughs> All right, okay, so uh, I think uh, it's about time, all right, so uh, it's a very interesting sharing from our speakers today, all right, so uh, maybe we leave some time for Q&A also. So I have one final question, maybe a short one. So do you know about the intern, uh, internship opportunity or is there any still a lot of job vacancy in your company? If you know about it, would you like to share some? Thanks, uh, Miss Sim. Yes, my center master is uh, willing to accept some interns and also some freshers from e electronics uh, field. So the the requirements that uh to works in uh, this uh, automation uh, the tester field, uh, I believe that uh, some knowledge that can that already learn from. EE classes decide uh, how to use uh, the digital multimeters, then the functional generators and also the oscilloscope. Um, this uh, will give the advantage of when we, when we, our Penta master teams recruit the, the new fresh grads. And also if, if the students know about the lab field, these are uh, definitely will add some some advantages besides of a uh, tester field we also we also will uh, hire some B plc uh, the, those, those students got some plc knowledge uh, it's like uh, the, the plc the logical thinking uh, so they will they will our company got hire this kind of uh, uh, got some ent entries for this maybe those are those are interested for to involve in the automation field can send me an email or through Dr. Yu. Dr. Yu can um, communicate with uh, me. Yeah. And then those interns are welcome. Welcome. Welcome <laughs> to find us resume or so. Don't worry. You can have a try. Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, thanks. Thank you very much. Sim. So if Miss Yuga or Mr. Hari, if you have any to add on, you, you may share. Yeah, you can, for our entire is a very variety of uh, job opportunity once from starting from the normals, like um, automations all the way until customer support, or you can be a developer, anything that you wanted, you think of as the electronic engineering programming, all those things. So feel free to apply through the entire website because there is a list of branches of all those things that you can actually choose from. So it's not that, uh, only one or two, but it's a lot of opportunity that for you to explore yourself and learn and evolve. All right, okay, thanks. All right, so thanks, yeah. uh, Mr. Hari. So if there's no more questions, so let me pass this session back to Mr. Jeffrey. So uh, again, a uh, very uh, many thanks to our speakers today, three speak Ms. C, Ms. Yuga and Mr. Hari. So thanks for your precious time and your generosity for to share your experience and thoughts with our junior and maybe uh, some future uh, students that would like to take up this uh, electronics engineering. All right, thank you very much again. Okay, so let's move uh, back, back to you, Jeffrey. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Yu and our uh, Utah alumni sharing. And before we end the webinar session, so from the screen, you can see our evaluation form. After attend this webinar, uh, maybe you are from Facebook, you can scan and uh, put in uh, the answer and evaluate it. And this actually improve our uh, future webinar as well. Or if uh, our attendees from Zoom, uh, you can see the link I shared uh, a moment ago. You can just click on it and uh, evaluate, okay? So, okay, we move to the next. Okay, uh, so we are about to end the webinar. Actually, uh, we are till 5 p.m., but it's okay. Um, I think this is a precious uh, 
uh, Xian Shenshen from our uh, Utah alumni to all of us. And um, just uh, before the end of the webinar session, uh, we try to um, introduce you our Utah, okay, information here as I share. So Utah campuses are uh, actually, uh, we have this award-winning Kampa campus in Para. This is uh, namely as our uh, main campus. It's actually maybe two hours from KL City. Okay, 170 km from KL. And we have a branch, okay, Sungai Long campus in Kajang, Selangor. Okay, 24 km from KL City. And as this area view, you can see, uh, this is our Kampa campus, main campus. So uh, surrounded by many beautiful lakes and definitely you will enjoy your study life here as our Utah alumni are uh, sharing just now. So um, we move to the next. This is our Dun Dr. Ling Leong Sek Hall. Okay. And we have a graduation ceremony before this uh, pandemic situation, but sadly uh, now we only can uh, make it uh, virtual. So before this, our Utah alumni, they actually um, graduate from this uh, grand hall. Okay, we call it Dun Dr. Ling Leong Sek Hall. Okay. And these are sculptures of Confucius and Einstein. Okay, just uh, located in front of our admin block. Okay. And um, our university actually, especially for Kampa campus, uh, rich with biodiversity. So um, uh, beside you spend your time in uh, study, and maybe after time, uh, after your study time, you can uh, walk around our beautiful campus, and definitely you have these uh, beautiful memories in your lifetime. Okay. And this is our Utah Sungai Long campus. Okay. And as you can see, we have. Um, uh, complete facilities uh, ready for students to apply it, like the lecture hall, um, Chinese medicine lab, and um, MBBS lab, and for this uh, engineering lab as well, and also this uh, gymnasium center, okay, and library, okay. So uh, we move on to our Utah rankings and awards, and uh, if uh, some of you uh, would like to know our um, ranking, you can uh, especially look at our university impact ranking in 2021. It's uh, actually 201 to 300. And for Asia University ranking uh, this year, actually 119. Okay, so um, uh, one thing to highlight actually our um, uh, graduate, our student actually they can find that job uh, within half year. And then the uh, graduate and probability and graduate rate is actually um, 97 percent. So uh, there is no question, no uh, no no problem for the student to to find a job after they graduate. Okay. Okay. We uh, highlight this. Actually, we are ranked second in times higher education (THE) in Malaysia, World University Rankings 2021. Okay. And um, I will give you a brief about our Utah programs. We have uh, 124 academic programs, which uh, consists of uh, four foundation programs, 77 bachelor program, and 31 master program, 12 PhD program. And applicants actually who do not uh, fill Utah English language requirement, uh, he or she will need to attend this uh, so-called EEP class, English Enhancement Program. Before they proceed to uh, foundation, if they don't meet the requirement, they will need to attend for one month. Before they proceed to degree, if they do not meet the requirement, then they will sit. Uh, they will need to uh, require to sit for two months EEP classes before they join degree. Okay, so um, this is the um, the summary of our area of study. Um, if you are interested in engineering field, that definitely you can uh, think about this uh, uh, area of study: engineering technology and built environment. Or if, for example, you are uh, looking for IT, you are good in mathematics, uh, then actually you can uh, think about IT program, okay? As well as we have a business program, agriculture and food science program, uh, MBBS program, life and physical sciences program. And this is our foundation program. And you, as you can see, we have foundation in arts and science. The duration of study is uh, one year and actually located at Kampa and Sungai Long campus. It's optional for students to choose whether 
they, they want to study. So uh, back to the time, uh, our Utah alumni, maybe uh, you know Starpark, right? Actually, uh, Starpark campus no more uh, function, <laughs> okay? No more operate. So we actually main campus at Kampa campus and branch at Sungai Long campus. So except foundation program leading to uh, the program we highlight here, definitely you have to spend your foundation time at Sungai Long campus. As well as uh, Chinese study, you have to spend your foundation in Kampa campus, okay? So um, we highlight on this uh, engineering program. Uh, all this, um, okay, we try to explain. We have uh, electronic engineering, environmental engineering, industrial engineering program, uh, petrochemical engineering. Actually, all these uh, engineering program we offer, uh, we so-called faculty under this uh, faculty of engineering uh, and green technology and actually offer at Kampa campus. As well as we have this, um, under this FEGD program, we have construction management, environmental, occupational, safety, and health program, OSH. And uh, we have this uh, special program for this uh, WBL, what we call for this uh, uh, work-based learning, WBL, electronic system and industrial management, which means two plus one concept. You can spend uh, two years time for study and another one year for this uh, uh, industrial learning, like uh, what we call uh, work-based learning, okay? So um, we try to highlight here uh, for our pro professional recognition as Malaysia is a signatory of the Washington Accord. Actually, Utah Engineering Program, they um, recognized by uh, most of the country like Hong Kong, China, India, Ireland, Canada, uh, Japan, Korea, and all these are country we, we list down here. So uh, no problem for, uh, for the recognition after you, uh, you taken this uh, um, engineering program at Utah, okay? And uh, we have this uh, international partnership, okay? Utah has established, established partnership with 290 local and overseas university and 190 local and overseas industry in 30 economies region, okay? As of uh, this year, uh, our record here. So in Asia, you can see uh, many country, we, we have actually have this uh, student exchange program, we have a research program or even study tour, okay? We collaborate with other country and we send students there. Okay, so uh, this is our contact details. If uh, you would like to know more about our program and uh, information, you can log on to our Utah website, okay, study.utah.edu.my, or you can email us at this email address, or even you can WhatsApp or call us. And uh, we recently opened up a new account for this Telegram. You can log uh, at this account and you can uh, update our highlight information from time to time as well as uh, WeChat, Facebook as well. So uh, thanks again to our Utah alumni. Thanks Dr. Yu okay, for this uh, session. Hope uh, we see you again. Okay, so the Facebook Live already ended.